Oh, it's a co-op game, but I don't have anyone to play with. Yes! 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 Lethal Company is a game so popular that everyone's already played it, so I don't know why I'm reviewing it. This game was released by Zekas in October 2023, but it isn't their first game. Over the last four years, this solo developer has made so many games that it's actually quite hard to work out how many. Steam says three, but their Itch.io lists eight, and that's ignoring their Roblox games, as everyone should. I think this approach as a developer is a good way to go. Fuck releasing one game a decade, where's that gonna get you? Red Dead 1, for example, was infinitely better than Red Dead 2, and yet the first one was released alongside four other games, including whatever these games are, they're too small to see. And Ellie Noir. And that game really was groundbreaking. Remember just trying to work out if someone was lying? Are you sure you're not lying about anything, sir? Shoot him. Red Dead Redemption 2 basically destroyed Rockstar for five years, and all this just so we could get more character development of our main character, Arthur. An uneducated man in the 1800s who is perfectly happy to murder thousands of innocent people, but sexism? Oh no, women need my help to vote. Great one, Rockstar, you've perfectly married the ideals of Harold Shipman with the Pankhurst family. What a compelling character. Not to mention there's also a scene where Arthur is visibly confused by racism. This was 1899 America. This is like a modern day person being confused by the concept of the internet internet or air. I think if you are an indie developer, it seems focusing on a simple, solid idea that will take no more than a year to get a stable version out seems like a slightly less soul-crushing approach. I feel like the VR scene embraced this at its core. Think of Beat Saber. I mean, the development time on something so simple couldn't have been more than three months. Three weeks! And it makes sense. All you do in that game is destroy evil cubes. Your turn, Caddy. Where did you find that? <laughs> Come up with a game with a simple setting and a simple primary gameplay loop. Like a single room where you shoot enemies, a single room where you hit balls, or just a game like this. Hello? Uh. Yes, we've got the GOAT boys! As far as I can make out, Zika spent about a year working on Lethal Company before it was released for early access, but it is far more complex than the games I just talked about. In Lethal Company, we play as employees for a company called The Company, and we are tasked to gather scrap from abandoned moons. And although this seems pretty minimal plot-wise, I think it actually gives you a lot to think about. Given the company's generic name and the fact that everywhere you see is so desolate, it implies that maybe The Company is the only thing left in the entire world. A far-reaching conglomerate. like if Amazon did everything and just admitted it was run by singular tentacle monsters. But why is the company run by tentacle monsters? I'm not a tentacle monster, and why do they want jars of pickles and Rubik's cubes so badly? Are they so omnipresent that simply everything has value, or are resources so scarce that they desperately need anything? The game has a nice level of intrigue that lets you wonder about what could really be going on as you mindlessly honk your horn incessantly, just waiting for death's sweet grit to take you. The limited plot here works so well because, as I always say, imagination can always think up something far more spooky than a shown reality. And speaking of spooky, this game is scary. Uh, this doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> With their long history of first making Roblox horror games and then Unity horror games, Zekas has been able to effectively make Lethal Company creepy <laughs> AF. And speaking of the little girl, it's me, the little girl, and allow me slash her to sell you something I've made. <laughs> I recently announced that I made the Absolute Nightmare box set, a box that you can get right now that includes over 10 different types of completely exclusive Up Is Not Jump themed merch. An almost 40 page long glow in the dark booklet written entirely by me. A 64 gigabyte USB drive in the shape of a personalized wrist computer that contains over three and a half hours of unseen videos written and produced by me. An amazing poster, a beautifully designed weathered cap stash that contains over 10 unique Up Is Not Jump themed caps. <laughs> But no, there's more. A sticker sheet with seven Up Is Not Jump themed stickers, three enamel pins that you can put on your favorite little girl dresses, a large temporary tattoo, three recipe cards, and although they haven't even shipped yet, we've already sold a third of them. Yeah, oh my, I can't move my arm. Thank you all though so much. So act now before the stocks are fully decimated by my ghostly ectoplasm. <laughs>
And now let's go back to how scary Lethal Company is. Lethal Company isn't terrifying though, but I beg to fucking differ. Generally the horror is built quite subtly and is achieved mostly with clever sound design. It starts with the game opening to what is, let's face it, a fucking jam. Great, great asset to the company. Asset. Great, great, great asset to the company. And this upbeat opening is great because it sets in stone that your ship is generally a pretty safe space. <laughs> and this happy music teaches you that. Even when your ship first lands on a desolate moon, you get some pretty relaxing atmospheric tunes straight out of Minecraft to start you off. But as you get further from your ship, it all changes. And then you enter a facility. All the music stops and you're left with mostly the immersive sounds of the building you're in. And simply put, all the sound design in this game is fucking fantastic. All of it. From your character's footsteps to the gentle whirring noises from machinery around some of the facilities. Every sound is just so impactful and the lack of music makes exploring each map and collecting scarp, 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 I've written scarp, all the more immersive and creepy. Where this game truly shines though is with the monsters that are out to make your scarp collecting journey all the more pants pooping. And while I'll get to how very and interesting they all are, their sound design is what sells it. Look, I'll play you some. Shut your eyes now and imagine a giant spider. Ready? Well, I can feel it on my back. There's nothing on me, right? What? Because of how horrible this is, Zekas has actually introduced a mode where the bunker spiders are replaced with the word spider. <laughs> All the monsters have their own very distinctive sounds, so you can work out which one is around you or on top of you. My favourite memory of the game's audio is probably hearing the slow footsteps of the masked enemies. The first time I heard these footsteps, I knew I was totally alone in this house, and yet I heard... Fucking chilling. Your wife isn't here, right? No, 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 she's not here today. What's so great about this situation though is this sound could have easily have convinced me that there was a fellow online player in the next room. Fortunately though, we all know what random players online are like. There is almost no way a human player would give off a slow, steady walk like that. So hearing it, I knew to fucking hide. Many of the enemies have ways that you can avoid them like this too. Spiders will leave webs. Uh, Snare fleas are visible if you're perceptive. Uh, you will always see a Bracken's eyes in the dark. Uh, and like the masked people, you can hear a lot of the game's enemies before you see them. Like Thumpers, the Ghost Girl, and Earth Leviathans. Ah, oh, fuck this game. The thing is, the main activity of this game, which is basically loot score, is to me somewhat boring. What makes this game good for me though, is outside its great atmosphere, is the enemies are all so varied. They range from not that dangerous, Nah man, I, I don't think this thing can hurt me, to the most dangerous beings in existence. See, as part of this review, I was gonna say this game is tough but fair, but these guys are not fair. See, each enemy is kind of like a boss monster, in that there's usually a specific tactic you can use to survive them. My favourite monster is probably the coil head, which will only approach you when you aren't looking at it, so getting away is pretty easy. Are you dead? Snare fleas can be battered off, bunker spiders webs can be avoided, hoarding bugs can be appeased, you should only glance at brackens, thumpers can be hit at the right time, eyeless dogs are blind, baboon hawks can be shouted at or ganged up on, and circuit bees will always kill me no matter how much I play this fucking game. As soon as you see or hear a specific enemy, you'll have to quickly recall how to deal with them and act. But because this game is so scary, I often just totally panic and forget what to do. Or, I just need to keep quiet. <laughs> oh for god's sake! And it isn't just the enemies that spawn that change the moment to moment gameplay. If you play as a team of three or four people, there are so many different ways you can approach the way you loot Rise, and explore. You can all have flashlights, split up completely, split up into teams, use weapons, use walkie talkies, leave people on the ship to guide you, be aggressive, be stealthy, use teleporters, stun weapons, radar boosters, jetpacks, guns. But for each item you hold or person you leave behind, there's less space to carry scrap. To many teams I work with, don't use any items at all and just wander around in the dark. There are just so many different enemies and tactics that the gameplay is always changing. And because the layout of the levels and the enemies that spawn are basically random, Lethal Company is just filled with those special organic moments that simply can't be planned. Oh my fuck. And I will say that although I think the difficulty is very well balanced, it, it does seem that some enemies can unfairly kill you without any warning. Oh. Uh, like this moment here when I watched yeah. my friend get killed fighting a nutcracker. I'm on it, I have it, I'm- Eventually I worked up all my courage to finish the job. I grabbed that sign and- Great. 
granted, this wouldn't have happened if I had been more aware of my surroundings or not alone. But I feel like the game could offer slightly more warning before it insta-kills you, especially given how difficult it is to deal with a lot of the enemies already. Please forgive me. This also shows how playing with anything other than a team of three or four people is basically suicide. I started off thinking I could play the game as a team of two, but making any real progress that way really isn't much fun. Partly because each quota and the value of script is basically the same regardless of if you have two, three, or four players. Either way though, due to the inherent design of the game, even if these issues were fixed, playing with three or four players is by far the most fun way to do it. This is because the way team speak has been implemented into this game is basically perfect. Perfect. There's a monster. How it works is pretty simple. When you're all together, you can all hear each other, but the further away you get from each other, the quieter your voices become, until eventually you can't hear each other at all. And once a teammate is out of earshot, it's like Schrodinger's cat. They are simultaneously alive and dead, but almost certainly they're dead. And the more players you have, the more fun this system is. Oh my God. Also, the fact that there is no global channel where you can chat with your team at any time is probably the best design choice in the whole game. Because this means when you go off on your own, you feel really, 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 really alone. It makes the walkie-talkie feel like such a sanity lifeline. Is there anybody out there? Overall then, I think Lethal Company is quite a special thing. The sleeper hit of a solo developer who has spent years pushing the limits of what they can do. See, most small-time horror games of this style will usually just have a few enemies with somewhat similar design. But Lethal Company not only layers over 15 completely different monsters, it has loads of different ways to play, varied levels with day and night, weather effects, stable online play, interesting lore, and the graphics are really great too. Too. The game seems to have some filters applied that give it a stylistic retro effect, not unlike Return of the Obra did. But I think these effects also successfully hide some quite low-res textures, which allows the game to run on less advanced systems while still looking pretty good. Just look how great this spinning fan looks, and this fire! Or just enjoy the striking look of the red sun rising in the morning. Oh, it really is bright! Did you hear that? Don't worry, <laughs> I'll keep us safe. Well, I guess we scared it off. Yes? Hello everyone, it's me, the masked little girl. I'm gonna get you. Jesus Christ, hello. I just wanted to appear to tell you that I'm gonna be streaming Lethal Company on this channel at Sunday, the 4th of February at some time with Dan Nerd Cubed, Matophobia, and many a true nerd. That's their names. So please come along and watch the stream. It will be here on this channel at this time. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> so do you want to do, do you want to do that again? What I'll do, yeah, I have a funny